shooting at that can. So you can measure the energy that you're getting at that can, you know, and the can would move each bullet that hits it. So the energy that you're transferring to that can is equal to let's just let's just simplify it. I mean, this isn't exactly um, correct, but it's basically the mass of uh, the mass and speed of the bullet times um, how many times you hit it, right? You know, if you hit it once, it's just that one bullet's mass and speed, right? Mass and uh, velocity. Um, if you hit it ten times, it's those ten bullets' mass and velocity. So you would, they would be added together. You know, the particles would be added together. And that's exactly what we see from the light equation. It simply says the frequency of light part, and I'm gonna I'm gonna insert particles. The frequency that you hit something with light particles is proportional to how much energy you get out. So if you hit it with 10 light particles, you get 10 energies. If you hit it with one light particle, you get one energy. That would make perfect sense according to the equation. If the frequency is 1, your energy is 1. If the frequency is 10, your energy is 10. Now that is totally different than a sound, a real wave, a sound like a sound wave's energy. The sound wave energy has nothing to do with frequency, and the light wave energy has everything to do with frequency. Obviously, light is not a wave in any way, shape, or form. It's simply a stream of particles. A stream of, in my last video, I talked about gas-like. You know, light photons are a gas. And then um, in my article, which I link to in my Light is a Gas video, I link to my article that I wrote on my website. And um, that says that, um, that the ether is actually a cloud of photons. So it's light that is stationary, light that's not moving. Light that's not moving, you cannot see. So that is what the ether is made out of. So since light is a stream of particles and not a wave, that is good news for space travel, okay? Because like I said before, you can't put a speaker on the back of your bicycle and power yourself forward. So, if light were a wave, if, if light were an ether wave, you know, a wave of these particles, we would not be able to use light to make us go anywhere. I mean, maybe we could levitate things with light, you know, like sonic levitation, you know, with that sound pressure. You know, you have a sound, you have a sound pressure, and that can make something levitate. But as long as you take this wave, the thing, oh my gosh. <laughs> the thing is going to fall if you're, you know, you'll say you're levitating, you have this sound wave right in here, and you're levitating something, sonic levitation. It's, if you take this away, it's just going to fall because you need that pressure there. You need a body to accept that force. Without any body, um, the sound is not going to be creating any uh, force downward. And that makes sense because it's a vibration. The molecules will hit the, will go down, but they'll also come right back up. So you're not getting any net, uh, net acceleration to cause a force. So if light were a wave, we would be screwed, because we would not be able to gain traction on the ether. We would not be able to space travel with light as our propellant. But since light, since we just defined using those equations. We just defined light as a particle and not a wave. I think I fully described it. So if you just if you want more explanation, just rewind it. But um, so light is a particle and not a wave. So that means that instead of light being analogous to sound in air, light is analogous to a air jet. You know, like a compressed air jet in air. So if you're use if you're floating in space you know we have the ether so you're floating in ether which is just a cloud of diffuse photons you can shoot light out and you will be able to push that photon cloud away basically you'll be able to create a density differential of um, photons in that ether photon cloud so since we're shooting particles it's not a wave we're shooting particles as light we will be able to gain traction on the photon field, those you know those 
dark light particles, the light particles that are not moving. Um, so, so that's good news. So that means that light drive is the space travel drive. You know, rockets. <laughs> once you're once you're at this level, it's thinking rockets in space is just a joke. You know, it's just like, you know, just a funny cartoon. A rocket working in space. You know, it's a total retarded notion. You know, it's just it's a it's like a little kitty fantasy game. You know, it's the stupidest thing ever. So, but light will actually drive you. So you what you shoot this big high power high frequency, you know, high frequency light is just more light particles hitting. Just more light particles flying, you know. So, you know, so that that's that's exactly what, you know, low frequency light radio. It's just bing 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 and then like visible lights like bing 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 bing. You know, it's just a difference in the amount of particles. And, you know, that's why. That's why the energy in light is directly proportional to the frequency. It would not be the case if it was a wave. Because that equation does not apply to any other wave. Except for light. And light's it's because light's not a wave. It's a particle. That equation applies to every particle. Like I said, the guns. The, the energy of bullets are the frequency that you're firing the bullets times the mass times velocity. So... Light, that equation is not the light wave equation. That's a light particle equation. There is no light wave. It's total retarded. That they, I mean, it's totally false, and they know it. They have to know it. They have to know it because they make sure to not allow you to figure that out, you know? So they know it. They know it. But this is all part of a huge NASA scam, you know? And it's just... I don't even know. I mean, maybe maybe they just don't know. Maybe I'm really the first one to think about this. But, you know, I really doubt it. I mean, who else has not compared a sound wave to a light wave? Who has not done that? You know, modern, no modern person has, but they had to have done that in the old times. You know, like 100 years ago. They had to have compared light wave to sound wave and said, hey, these equations do not match up. This light wave equation matches with a particle equation. You know, just the, then it's just the number of particles times the particle's energy, you know. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's that. Um, so that's good news, you know. We can travel through space. The ether is made up of dark light and, um, light that's stationary. And then, so light that's moving can push off of the stationary light, just like a can of compressed air or, you know, a balloon. You have a balloon and, you know, you have just the regular... 14.9 or I don't know PSI 14.5 I don't know PSI so the air coming out of the balloon pushes on the atmosphere and it can go forward so in that same way we can use light a beam of light to push off of the stationary light particles um, that make up space and we can move forward so it's light drive so light drive is the answer rockets are a joke Rockets do not work in space. Rockets are great um, for working in air, you know, and hopefully, and basically our, um, so basically our light in space is like compressed air on Earth. So if we can, if we can come up with the equivalent of a rocket in space, like where we're not just pushing light against, um, against the ether if we can if we can push light even faster or you know if we can you know or like ions ions work in air ions do not work in space because ions are creating a charge differential between the air and your thing so like let's say we have negative so that means that it will positively charge the air particles here and it's negative charge so it will re repel so it's repelling itself it's keeps repelling itself forward from the air by ionizing it. So if we could come up with an equivalent of that for photons, then we're even better off. You know, we're going from low tech, which is compressed air, to high tech, which is rockets, to high, very high tech, which is ions. If we can come up with the rocket equivalent and ion equivalent for photons, 
you know, like a, a spot, like a light beam, like a laser, would be the equivalent of compressed air in space. If we can come up with better um, ways of uh, of gaining traction on the photon on the photon field, the dark light field in space, we will be able to go even faster. And there is no speed limit. You know, you don't turn into light when you hit the speed of light, like Einstein said. Einstein was wrong about just everything, you know. And um, gravitational lensing doesn't exist. It's called atmospheric refraction. Same thing I used to disprove the flat earth theory. Atmospheric refraction is what causes light to bend around everything. So light to bend around galaxies, for light to bend around planets. You know, it's, it's atmospheric lensing. You know, so there, there's gas particles closer, you know, closer to these bodies. And when you're going through that field of gas particles closer to these bodies, the light will bend around it. So it's just atmospheric refraction throughout the entire universe. All right, so Einstein's theory of relativity is totally false as, you know, as well. So, I mean, if you go past the speed of light, what happens? nothing you know people wouldn't really be able to see you you would they would see you when they would see you here when you're actually over here so i mean it's really not a big deal you don't turn into photons when you cross the speed of light just like you don't turn into sound when you cross the speed of sound you know you get a little sonic boom which is the sound building up and then crossing that same with light, you know, you get like a flash of light. That's it. You know, you you're going, you hit the speed of light. Some observer would see a flash of light, and that's it. And then you would um, you would be here, and he would see you here, and he would just see you because you're going faster than the speed of light. So he would see you behind where you actually were. That's it. There's no turning into light. There's no quantum effects or anything it's all normal you know you're just going faster than the speed of light if you keep accelerating you just keep accelerating you keep accelerating you're eventually going to cross the speed of light you know so it's not that difficult another thing is that if since you know i'm saying that we have a uh, we have a um what's i going to say we have a medium of these dark light particles these these non-moving light particles the ether so what that means is that light is going to slow down, just like sound. Well, does the sound slow down? But see, sound is um not the same as light because you know. But anyway, so I can't really think of sound. But a particle stream, you know, like let's say you're shooting compressed air, that air is going to eventually slow down because it's meeting friction with the air. If you can gain traction on a medium your stream that you're shooting out to gain traction will slow down eventually. So that would mean that light slows down. And that is a very important discovery because, you know, we it's hard to say, you know, it's like, oh, well, these, these stars are 20 light years away. It's taken, or let's say, uh, 2 million light years away, right? It's taken light 2 million years to get to us. Right? So it's like, well, the universe has to be 2 million years old, right? How are creationists, you know, how can we account for that? I mean, there's not much we can say, right? Nobody's thought of this. What if light slows down as it goes? What if the speed of light is not a constant? What if we are in a medium of ether and the light slows down over time? So it seems, so it's like the light is taking longer to get to us than we would expect because we expect the speed of light to stay constant so if light is taking longer to get to us those objects we're going to assume are farther away than they really are what if the universe is small what if the universe is small and light just slows down making things seem like they're very far away that's another awesome uh topic there i am the nature hacker go do work <laughs>